good to see our beautiful faces. And I can imagine the level of anticipation we have in today's outcome. It's a just it's a simple idea. I'm here today, first session of my work today as I was directed, is to tell us why we are here. And I just began to think that why is it so? What, what will make people, so to say, respect an animal more than as a human being? Well, today, we're here to bring the conversation into an organized form. We're here to discuss what I think we all have been asking about. And interestingly, it's not just a local conversation, it's global. The subject of life and the value for life is not local, it's global. It's not, when we're done here by God's grace, sometime in September, we'll be running the UK edition of this idea. So we're used to um, understanding that some things that we see in Nigeria, for example, don't end in Nigeria. They, they happen all over the world, including the decadence of the value for life. So today, we want to bring the conversation into view. And while we know that there are different kinds of life, we know that there is the plant life, there is the animal life, there is the human life. And if we want to take it in much, much higher, is the divine life in the sons and daughters of valor, young but mighty heirs to the throne. No half stepping, always full motion. No small swings, always home runs. Shooting for the stars, loaded with ammunition. In the gym of life, toning my shape, crafting my character, strengthening my will, sweating the small stuff, enduring through the storms. They say there's no other place like home. Sorry, mama. Home I have it to learn, but it's time I go hard. We have a statement, a belief statement in the company. And what it is is that we say that everyone deserves the benefit of a modern connected life. And when we talk about modern con connected life, we're not just talking about voice and data. We're talking about the, and I'm still going to talk about creating shared value. We're talking about creating value, bringing products and services that lift many out of poverty that enable people to be connected even in the very remotest areas and they can trade because they can use services. Well, you see, once you remove the lead of religion of your thinking, particularly as an African, that is probably when you stand the highest chance of coming to with your greatest potential because there's so much around us as a people that is almost existential right and those things are not actually but they are almost that so when you look at the world today there is no society that is predominantly black that is prosperous it's not one. Any society that is predominantly black is terribly you know, poor, provision, underdeveloped. And then the excuse, of course, is to plug into slave trade, plug into colonialism, say that those things are responsible for how we got to where we are. And on many levels, they are responsible for so many things. That is not what is responsible for why we are where we are. But even if we take the liberty to assume that that is why we got here, we then have the choice to choose how we want to navigate the future, regardless of what our history is. I mean, how do you continue to define wisdom if you evaporate foolishness? Foolishness has to be constant for wisdom to continue to have value. Any commitment to define God in a flawed world without understanding the place of evil is naive and ignorant. 
you really can't take away evil out of this world. The devil is not going to die. What do you think? New level is new death. You must have another way of articulating your responsibility. So people came together and said, we need a party of Christians. And that is the party of blind people. Hello? Give me a round of applause. Let's give you very well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come with you, man. You will need another type of intervention for you to stand a chance. You learn competition when it's not.